Windows updates. It seems like that is what everybody has been talking about, including us, since the Ryzen 9000 series launched. And there, there's a good reason for that, right? Is because we've shown and others have shown that 24H2, as well as an optional incremental update for 23H2, have some net positive impacts on the gaming performance for the Ryzen 9000 series. And I, I did a video about that just right up here, or maybe it's gonna be over here. That serves as a good primer for this video. That's because in this one, I set out to answer another question. And that is, how do these updates that everybody's talking about impact older Ryzen CPUs? I mean, AMD's blog post about this seemed to indicate it should impact Zen 3 and Zen 4 right alongside the new Zen 5 based CPUs. So we grabbed four processors to test it out. The 5600X, 5800X3D, 7600X, and 7800X3D. The main focus here is on the optional update though, since it gives comparable performance uplifts, and for people with existing systems, well, they don't have to completely reinstall Windows to get its benefits. At least that's what has to happen up until 24H2 is officially rolled into Windows Update. And getting this optional update, well, it's pretty simple. Just head into Windows Update, select Advanced, and then Optional Updates. From there, you might need to refresh the screen until you see KB5041587 and install that. What I wanted to do here though is cover two different segments. More entry level CPUs with the 5600X and 7600X while also seeing a best case scenario for gaming with the X3D chips. So why are these updates having a supposedly positive effect? Now we have no way to verify this since Microsoft hasn't said anything in their official release notes. But according to some people we've talked to, it mitigates the performance hit of the Spectre and Melt down patches that were rolled out years ago. That, well, it sort of makes sense, since if you remember, back then there were a ton of system slowdowns reported, especially in gaming. And people, of course, they were actively trying to find ways around it. Anyways, there is one thing that you might want to find your way around, and that is this case from Antec. The new Antec Flux Pro is an absolute win of a full tower with tasteful design elements that don't scream for attention, but are perfectly mature to stand out among copycat cases. And you know Antec will include fantastic out of the box airflow with six fans and proper shroud ventilation to help your GPU breathe better. It's not just a gimmick, but a clever use of a 90 degree power supply mount that actually helps with cable management at the same time. This case was clearly designed by PC builders to make your journey as pleasant as possible and is one of my favorite full towers right now. Check it out below. So that really sets the stage for everything. But before we jump into benchmarking, there's one thing that I needed to discuss, and that is how we go about benchmarking these processors. Every single time we install a new processor in a system, we reinstall Windows. In this case, what we did is we took 23H2 up to the latest version, benchmarked the processor, and then after all of our gaming benchmarks are complete, we apply the optional update. And that led to the four sets of numbers you see here. Every processor has results with 23H2 with the latest updates and also numbers with the update installed. Let's start with Baldur's Gate as an example. Both X3D processors get a lot higher relative performance increases than the non-X3D parts. Actually, the 5600X doesn't see any boost whatsoever. A few other games fall into that same trend too, where the X3D chips seem to benefit from the update far more than the non-X3D variants. As a matter of fact, this update can have huge implications in the right games for folks who see no reason to upgrade their 5800X3D. Cyberpunk hits the same way for the X3D chips, but this time the 5700X joins in on the action by getting almost 10% better performance with the update, while the 5600X, well, again, it doesn't get much. Starfield, unfortunately, is gonna be another disappointment for people who own a 5600X because it just seems there's nothing left in its tank. And the 7600X, it almost feels the same way. But if you're rocking one of those X 3D chips, there's some good news. These aren't leaps forward by any stretch of the imagination, but there's still no doubt this update has a positive effect. And yet there are also some situations like Spider-Man where the performance of the 7800X3D doesn't see an uptick, but that could be due to it hitting a GPU rather than CPU limit. Meanwhile, all of the other processors get some kind of benefit, from small ones with the standard X series chips to pretty significant on the 5800X3D. There's also a bunch of games that see some very small increments incremental frame rate increases across every single CPU. Robocop falls into that category, which is actually a lot more interesting than other titles since this one uses UE5, so I wouldn't be surprised if other games using this engine also benefit. The same thing goes for Horizon Forbidden West, though I would have expected those 1% lows to get in on the action too, but 
they didn't. Meanwhile, these performance increases in CS2, they shouldn't surprise anybody because this is a highly CPU dependent game. But again, those X3D chips, they just run away with things. And there's a whole lot of other titles that don't see any benefits whatsoever. So this update really seems to be laser targeting certain games or specific game engines, ones which might hit the branch prediction element pretty hard. Meanwhile, games like these ones might not benefit from that optimization, or they've already been optimized in other ways, so the impact would be infinitesimal or simply non-existent. Luckily though, we didn't see any performance regressions either, at least not ones that could be chalked up to anything but standard deviation. There is one exception though, and that was Rainbow Six on the X3D chips. While the averages did see a small downwards trend, the 1% lows were consistently cut down even after we ran through the test 10 or more times. And while this is just one game among 14 in our testing, I have to wonder if we stumbled onto a single game that didn't like the update or if there's others out there too. So what this all shows is that the benefits from this specific update are very situationally dependent. Sometimes you'll hit on a game that delivers a lot better frame rates, while at other times there's no real benefit. The way I look at this is pretty straightforward. Something is simply better than nothing, especially when the numbers are averaged across 14 titles. And there's some real bangers here too, which is why the 5800X3D and 7800X3D get slightly bigger uplifts than the 7600 X and 5600X. Nonetheless, every CPU we tested did get better with the update. Still, I have to say that people with Ryzen 5000 series and 7000 series need to stand up and rejoice here because something as simple as a Windows update is netting them better performance. Better performance in some cases than actually upgrading their systems to the latest Ryzen 9000 series chips. And again, that particularly focuses on the X3D owners out there. Their processors just keep looking better and better. And this situation gave them another level up, a buff to their main character. Anyways, that's pretty much it for this video. This one is sort of like came from my heart because I love looking at the retained value for so many of these older or slightly older pieces of hardware. And in that vein, if you guys have any ideas as to what you want to see, maybe with slightly older generations of CPUs and GPUs, by all means, let me know in the comments below. I'm Mike with Hardware Canucks, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.